how to mobilize a construction project, 10 important activities of project mobilization. Welcome to Halshuway channel. If you are new to this channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button to get related videos. It is evident that the early steps and process that are implemented will have a significant impact on the success of your project. When a project is awarded to the contractor and the notice to proceed is received, the first step in starting a new project is to create a project startup strategy. This is known as mobilization plan. It includes mobilizing the contractor's resources, deploying manpower, and establishing equipments at the project site and erecting or building temporary structures such as offices, site utilities, storage, and so on. In this video, we will see 10 important activities you should carry out during mobilization of a construction project. You will get answers for the question, what is your job during the mobilization period when you are assigned as a project manager on contractor site? Let's see the activities one by one. Activity number one, obtain legal documentation describing the site boundary. You will get the exact location and site boundary information from the site handover document. You need benchmarks for plotting and resurveying the entire area of your site. This data is important for the other nine activities to be conducted during the mobilization period. Activity number two. Preparation of site layout. Once you define the site boundaries, you can prepare site layout or site organization plan. The layout of a construction site include locating, sizing, and positioning of temporary facilities, including anything from small facility to warehouses, fabrication shops, repair shops, storage areas, batching plants, and so on. Please remember that a photographic or video survey must be conducted before starting any work on the project site. Activity number three, construction of temporary facility. In most of the contracts, temporary utilities and support facilities required for the project will be provided by the contractor, depending on the provisions of the contract, of course. Based on the approved site layout plan, you will construct the temporary facilities like contractor's office facility, supervisor's office facility, drinking water, sanitary facility, power supply and ICT services, appropriate site access roads, warning signs, enclosure fence for the site, waste disposal, storage and production areas. Activity number four, office facility purchase. Once the temporary facilities are built by the contractor, office furniture, computers, printers, first aid tools, personal protective equipments, and so on shall be purchased during the mobilization period. Activity number five, resource deployment such as manpower, material, and equipment. The first thing in this activity is manpower deployment. As a project manager, you need to prepare project organizational structure based on the scope of the project and bid requirements regarding key personnel. It is the organization of people, their roles, process, and reporting system, sometimes known as line of command. You should properly design the project organization chart starting from the project manager down to unskilled labor. You should then calculate the total manpower requirement of your project from the organization chart by counting the number of people assigned to each position down the hierarchy. Remember that all manpower may not be necessarily deployed to the project during the mobilization period. You may request your head office for deployment of prioritized manpower only. When you come to the equipment deployment, as a project manager, you need to prepare machinery requirement of your project based on the scope and nature of the project. Make sure that the equipment satisfy minimum bid requirement provided in your contract document. Out of the total equipment demand of your project, you may deploy prioritized machineries during mobilization time. Material deployment. You need materials for construction of temporary project facility, such as cement products, reinforcement bar, gravel, sand, hand tools, sanitary materials, electrical materials, furniture, computers, printers, and other modular office components. The list goes on. 
after you complete the storage and handling area at your project you may also need to mobilize materials required for the actual execution of your project especially bulk materials rebar scaffolding and so on activity number six preparation of master work schedule you need to review the estimated and schedule prepared during project bid or negotiation time based on the actual facts on the ground once the site handover is done your project will commence after the mobilization period is over you will identify the critical paths of your project all the way from the commencement date to completion date activity number seven design review once you are equipped with necessary drawings and specifications of your project senior draftsman or the architect need to review the design as an experienced contractor you will then present the important findings and your proposed solutions to the consultant's office for final decision activity number eight pre-construction material test during the mobilization period pre-construction material test shall be conducted such as concrete mix test which includes all ingredients of concrete rebar test soil test and so on once you possess test results of those materials you will start deploying corresponding materials such as gravel sand admixture cement rebar and other materials activity number nine identifying suppliers and assigning appropriate subcontractors as most of your mobilization activities are now completed, it is time to begin actual execution of your project soon. That's why appropriate subcontractors shall be identified and assigned to each item of works in your project. If the agreement with the subcontractors is not supply and fixed type, then you need to identify suppliers of materials and equipment which are necessary to carry out your project. You will conduct subcontractors meeting regarding project expectations, safety, quality, and time requirements of your project. The last activity is activity number 10. Notify the local authority to begin construction. In order to begin executing your project, you need to obtain the required permits or licenses from local authority. Now let's summarize the discussed activities once again. For effective mobilization of your project, you should prepare mobilization plan or schedule for the activities at hand. I hope you get important information on mobilization of a construction project by the contractor side. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. And to see future videos like this, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Thank you. See you soon.